In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the Windows 10 on ARM Insider Preview running on Parallels Desktop 16 for M1 Mac Technical Preview. So basically, we're creating a Windows Virtual Machine running on the Parallels Desktop Tech Preview. So the name of the game here is Preview. It's not something you should rely on for any sort of mission critical work whatsoever, but I was surprised at how well it worked already this early in the game. So to get all this work in, you're gonna need a few things. First of all, you're gonna need Windows 10 on ARM Insider Preview. So you're, you'll need to be a Windows Insider to download that. And you also need to be a Windows Insider to get the latest dev build that allows you to run emulated X64 apps. So you will need a Microsoft account to make that happen. And you'll also need an account for Parallels in order to get the technical preview working as well. Other than that though, as long as you have an M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or Mac Mini, you should be relatively good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to Parallels' website. Uh, I'll have the link down below in the description and you want to download the technical preview. Uh, you will need to register with Parallels in order to get to this page, so just keep that in mind. And there are some things you need to know about this whole setup. Number one, it requires a Mac with an M1 chip. That much is obvious, but it also requires an operating system that's ARM based. So you cannot use an x86 based operating system like you would normally do when running parallels on an Intel based Mac. So that's why we need to use the Windows 10 on ARM Insider Preview. So along with the inability of using an x86 based operating system in this VM, it's also not possible to resume or suspend your session. You need to shut down Windows instead. And lastly, ARM32 apps do not work. When you try to launch them, they'll crash immediately. Uh, so keep that in mind. So. You wanna copy your activation key because Parallels will ask you that upon the installation. And then you wanna go ahead and click the download button to download Parallels Desktop 16 for M1 Max to your desktop or to your download folder, whatever the case may be. Now you wanna go to the Windows Insider page. You wanna make sure you're registered for Windows Insider because that's, that's the only way you'll be able to download the Windows Insider preview for ARM64. So you can just click this button right here to initiate that download. So once you have Parallels downloaded and the Windows 10 ARM64 Insider Preview downloaded, it's time to get started with the fun stuff. So here is Parallels Desktop. You're just gonna double click on that to mount the DMG. Once you do that, you just double click on the install button there. Go ahead and click open and we'll give it a second. And I do speed up a lot of things throughout this tutorial so you're not kept waiting. So just be patient if it's taking a little bit longer on your end. All right, so you wanna uncheck where it says optimal, just uncheck that on the SLA, click accept, put in your username and password, and it's initializing Parallels Desktop. And then you'll be met with an introductory screen. This kind of goes over some of the requirements and limitations that we already discussed. So just go ahead and click the continue button in the bottom right hand corner. And then you wanna drag the Windows image that you downloaded. The extension should be VHDX. Just drag it and drop it on top of the installation assistant and then click create. And that should create and configure Windows 10. Now I have sped this up quite a bit as you can see. So just be patient because it's gonna take a little bit of time on your end to make this work. All right, so it's gonna go through and set up devices and kind of get everything started as far as configuration is concerned there. All right, so we're looking good to go here thus far. So we're running Windows 10 on our M1 Mac. Now, the first thing I recommend doing, at least initially uh, in this early stage of the game, is to go up to Actions and go to Configure. And then you wanna go to the Options page, select More Options, and then for time, change it to Do Not Sync. If you don't do this, at least in this initial early version, then you may find that Windows becomes unresponsive. At least I did. All right, so once you do that, you should be good. The next thing you wanna do is just go ahead and maximize your screen. So we have enough screen real estate here. And then we wanna take some next steps to get X64 emulation working on Windows 10 on ARM. So to do that, you wanna go ahead in the search box, type in Insider. And then you wanna select the Windows Insider program settings. So just click on that. And then to enable the Windows Insider program, you have to enable diagnostic and feedback settings. So just go ahead and click on that link. And then under optional diagnostic data, turn the switch to on. All right, go back. And then click where it says link a Windows Insider account. 
select Microsoft account and then put in your username and password for your Microsoft account. You should have already created this to, to download the Windows 10 on ARM developer preview anyway. All right, so that's what I'm doing right here and I'm logged in. So just click next and there you go. So you wanna click where it says beta channel because we wanna switch that over to the dev channel to get the really bleeding edge update. So click dev channel and then click the home button and then we're going to search for the latest updates. So you wanna to go to update and security and check for updates. So click that button and this should surface the latest dev update, which includes the X64 emulation, which was just recently added. So there we go. There is the Windows 10 Insider Preview 2279.1. You wanna click where it says download and install. And this will take a while, okay? Uh, so your version number may be different if you're watching this video a little bit later. And it's possible, if not likely, that Microsoft will introduce the X64 emulation in a more publicly accessible version. In other words, some of the nitty gritty details may be a little bit different when you get to this tutorial. So just keep that in mind. So the installation, like I said, does take a while. I've sped this up quite a bit. Uh, but it's still taking a little bit of time here, as you can see. So now it's complete, and now it is just a matter of restarting our virtual machine. Now you will see a little restart notification in the bottom right-hand corner as well. You can click either restart button to get started. So we'll just go up here to the Windows Update, click Restart Now, and it'll restart just like that. And then as you restart, you'll notice it'll complete the installation process, and this too will take a little bit of time, so just be patient. So once the installation is complete, it's going to want to reinstall Parallels Tools. You'll notice that perhaps in the upper left-hand corner. There we go, so Parallels Tools, installation. So just let that complete as well. And this will take a little bit of time. You need to restart again, and that's what we just did. All right, obviously I sped that up again. So now we're good. So let's go ahead and run some applications. First of all, we'll just open up Microsoft Edge and uh, we'll see if the internet works. Let's try that first. All right, so we'll just type in 9to5mac.com and yep, so there we go, 9to5mac loaded right up at Microsoft Edge and uh, we can just browse around like that. Works perfectly fine, internet works great. So while we're here, might as well just go ahead and download Steam and check out that and see, see how games run. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Install Steam. Install and then click Run. And we'll get that installed. Yes. So while we're getting this installed, let me know what do you guys think about the M1 Max? It's been, you know, a little while now that we've had these Macs. What do you guys think about them thus far? How are you liking them? I personally love my uh, Mac mini that I'm using. I love the MacBook Air and Pro. I think they're all great machines in their own right. So I have Steam installed. We're gonna go ahead and download the latest version of Microsoft Edge, which is based on Chromium. And we're gonna go ahead and run that as well. All right, so we got the latest version of Edge. And this is a lot better. Let's see if we can play a 4K video. All right, so here is my iOS 14.4 beta changes and features video. And it is playing back just like that. Let's go ahead and go full screen and works pretty well. 4K, full screen playback. On a Windows 10 for ARM virtual machine running on Parallels on an M1 Mac. So, I mean, what do you guys think? So I've been downloading Rocket League on Steam and it's finally complete. So let's go ahead and play Rocket League or at least attempt to play Rocket League here on this virtual machine. Just go ahead and click play on Steam. Say yes. And I'm definitely not holding my breath on this one because, oh, well, okay. So there we go. Uh, it is loaded up and you can see, it does look like it's going to be playable at least. Perhaps we'll see. Definitely not going to expect great performance on, on the Mac mini on this first generation M1 chip. Um, but we'll see if it's at least playable. I would be, I'd be, um, I'd be impressed to be honest with you. So, um, 
have the settings turned down a little bit. Let's go to custom games exhibition. And let's go ahead and create a match and see what we can get going here. All right, so let's go ahead and join. Um, I mean, it looks pretty good. And let's see how it actually plays though. Oh, uh, it's definitely not 60 frames per second, right? <laughs> but um, I mean, I think it's playable. I think it's playable. What do you guys think? I mean, it's, I mean, let's be honest. It's Rocket League. It's not exactly the most graphically intense game out there. Uh, and it's still kind of struggling. But again, this is just, I mean, this is super early. I mean, this is a technical preview, both on, on the Windows side of things and on the parallel side of things. And yet it still is able to run. Um, and we're running like the bleeding edge dev build which gives you that X64 uh, compatibility. Because before that, if you didn't have that, that dev build installed, you couldn't play Rocket League at all because it requires X64 emulation. And what I do recommend is bumping up the allocation of cores for the virtual machine from two to four. And that should help out performance a little bit as well. Um, and yeah, so again, it's super early, but the fact is it works. And if there's like an application that you run on Windows that you absolutely need, it's good to know that, hey, if I needed it, I could at least get it here using um, the Parallels technical preview along with the Windows for ARM. So in my opinion, it's just nice to know that, yes, if I, if I had an application I needed to run, I could do so, even though there's no boot camp for M1 Max. So that kind of is just nice to think about or just nice to know in the back of your head that that is possible. So I have Geekbench 5 here. We're gonna try that out here and see how that works out. And 1490 for single core, 4808 for multi-core. That's actually pretty decent given the circumstances. What do you guys think? So I also wanted to try out some other apps. So I downloaded Affinity Photo, which is my favorite photo editing app on the Mac. It's multi-platform, so available on Windows as well. And the performance wasn't great, but it was definitely usable. And one of the downsides to this setup is that ARM32 apps do not work. So if, for instance, if I launch something like the Microsoft Store or Skype, the built-in Skype for Windows 10, it just won't load up. It'll crash immediately. So the Microsoft Store, click that, it dies immediately. So again, ARM32 apps do not work at this stage of the game. Perhaps in the future, there will be a workaround or some other way to use these applications, but right now they don't work. So let's go back to Steam and let's try another game just, just to try it. Let's try Trackmania. It's been a long time since I played this game. I'm gonna go ahead and install it. Click next. And speed it up a little bit. There we go. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and play. See what we get. See if it even works at all. And maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, maybe. We'll see. Oh, yeah, it does work. So, um, ah, actually it looks pretty decent. We'll see how it plays though. That's the question. Oh, I forgot my controls. Okay. <laughs> it's taking me a while to get used to the controls on a keyboard. Um, that plays pretty well. What do you guys think? So, I mean, this is still super early. That's sort of the, the name of the game. It's super early, yet even at this early stage, I've been impressed by uh, Windows 10 running on an M1 Mac via Parallels technical preview. So what do you guys think? Are you interested in running Windows on your M1 Macs? Or are you just, are you over Windows and you don't want anything to do with it now that boot camp is no more? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you have any questions or concerns, also let me know, or just suggestions as well, because I'm not claiming to be an expert at this at all, but I hope this video was able to help you and check the description for more details. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.